question uh, with Crystal that, you know, we, sometimes we need to ask for help because we have to allow other people to be of service to of service as well. We can't do everything by ourselves. We have certain talents. We have certain abilities and other people have other abilities. And so when we ask for help, we're allowing those people the ability to use their to use their gifts, their abilities, and and their being of service to us. And so the whole idea with with um, creation is being of service to people. And this is a lot of people are self serving is I I I. But we realize that we're more of a tribe, and we can. When we act as a tribe, we assist each other. So, you know, um, you know, if you if you look at some of the communities, uh, I'm going to use like the Amish community, like they work together and and, you know, somebody might be good at uh, doing roofing. Somebody might be good at doing flooring. Somebody might be good at baking bread. And so they bring their talents together and they all share and they work together as a as a group, as a tribe doesn't mean that they lose their individualism, but it means that they can cooperate and they work together as as one. And and we've lost that in our society where we don't we don't interact like a tribe anymore. We've become isolated and it's and it's like um, a situation where it's like, well, what about me, how I feel and stuff? But that's fine. But it's it's also how can we be um, how can we come together and, you know, the talents and, and abilities we have, how can we share them with someone else who and how can they share with us? So I think sometimes we have to step back and look at what we can do and how we can share it with someone and how we can allow somebody to share things with us. Allowing the energy exchange, basically. Yeah. And not being afraid to ask. Exactly. So Terry, what would you call that if, okay, like in this instant, we want to be found useful? Right. And if we're, we're, so we're always giving because we want people to desire us, desire to be around us and find us useful. But then there's the other part where if you're in a real community where you are really loved, you're in a real relationship where you should be able to give and receive love. You can never ask for help or ask for the things that you need, but you're always in the state of giving. What, what would you call that? I'm at a loss for words because I've heard this before. Well, I, I think what happens with that is that we get into that. Um, there's a balance between being a martyr, right? And like, I don't need any help, right? So, but we have to release that aspect of ourselves, maybe because there is hurt and stuff that happens. But I think that that comes from that. Uh, from the sacral chakra, and it's funny, the sacral we're wearing, it's orange, right? But that's, it's about being able to release that, that feeling that, oh, I can do it myself, or I can do this and I can do that. I don't need help. That's that whole martyrdom, uh, martyrdom. So there's a, there's a, there's a balance that we have to find. And so, uh, perhaps that comes with, that feeling of being insecure in who we are, and then we push and we push, and well, I don't need help. But but as soon as we try to find some balance there, then we can allow we can allow it in. And and it's you know I, I think as people who are healers, we want to give, but we also have to receive because what are we giving? We, you know, it's all about the flow from the creative source. It's not from us. You know, part of it is realizing that it flows through us. 
It's not us. It's allowing that flow to come through. And so at some point, and that's why, you know, when we talk about the chakras, if you've got a center that's kind of blocked, then we're, we're, then it's holding us back. We're not allowing the flow through. And so you're getting, um, a, a, a place of blockage. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it is, it's, it's showing up as, as that martyrdom syndrome, but maybe it's, it's at the heart and, and that's blocking there. So then we're not allowing the flow through. So, you know, maybe it's about balancing ourselves and, and taking a, a look at ourselves and, and opening up to, to allowing the flow through. I think, um, Another part of that also is being able to be around people without trying to fix everything that they have going on. Because a lot of times people don't ask for help, but people are constantly volunteering advice and help when you haven't been asked it. And so you're constantly in this state of overgiving and like you say, martyrdom, but then burning yourself out at the same time. On the other aspect, what I was thinking about with Crystal was an exercise that um, I'd like to discuss at another time where you, you're you balancing, how do you see yourself and how others see you? So allowing for people like your boss to let you know what your skills are, what skills they see in you helps, right? Because now you have an outside perspective but what was what I heard from what you were saying, Crystal, is like it's like you don't you're not giving yourself credit for the things that we do. That's why like last night before I went to bed, I had to write a list of things that I actually accomplished so that I didn't feel like I wasted my whole day because I mean we can end up doing a lot in a day and we just don't give ourselves any credit for it. And um, I'd like to do some exercises in the future where there's a jogger, like a memory jogger, so that you can go through it and say, wait a minute, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. You know, these things that we don't think about that are parts of our character, where we can give ourselves credit and, and not beat ourselves up because we can quickly think about all the things that we did wrong, but not really think of all the things inside us that are that are going well. So Terry, um, well, for today, the exercise was that we're going to pull a card and take time to reflect on how that card can help us right now in the present moment and things that we can do to incorporate that card into the, the coming week. So that was the card that you pulled already, Terry? Yeah, it was Trump. And it's, I, I, you know, as we were talking, that was it, the, the tribe. And I think that we have to stop and think about our connection with the other people in our lives and, and how we form a, a community and that they, they can assist us as we can assist them. You know, like we, we, we often think that we want to go it alone, but we do need, we need to be cognizant of them as well. Like we have our gifts, but they also have gifts and we can allow them. Like in, in the case of your boss, Crystal, you allowed him or her to express what they were good at. So you did, by you asking, it, it, it created some kind of a flow for them to be able to, uh, and maybe when you started to talk to them, maybe you even sensed that they were opening up to a flow of information, you know, and, and, and sometimes we are called to be that catalyst for people. She could have even possibly triggered that person to begin to appreciate you more because they're like, wait a minute, I, if she does do this and she, it caused them to have to think about how they see you. Um, yeah, it's interesting that you said that and when the, when you said about the sacral chakra because it, it is actually, it has a lot to do with being humbled enough to allow them to offer you back that same energy exchange. Whereas yeah. like for me, I worked so hard 
that, like, I didn't get to have the same boss for a long period of time. I'm in there seven years. I've had at least five different bosses. And when I lost the one that was my favorite, I worked so hard to pass a test just to get put back on that same person's team. Then I requested being put back on their team, and I was denied. And I just kept thinking, I want to be back on this person's team so badly. And then lo and behold, I was put back on their team. And it was karmatic, and I told that boss, I worked hard to get back to here. It was designed this way for a reason. This is what I wanted all along. But we can't always have what we want when we want it. But mm -hmm. I wanted it, and I knew exactly what I wanted then, right? Whereas now I'm like, I know I need, I know what I need in a way, but I don't know how to ask it. And by by opening myself up humbly like I did, it made me cry so hard because I was being raw with my own emotion on how humbled I am with needing a little bit of help to get me to that next stepping stone. And when you see an email from your boss saying, please don't hesitate to reach out, you know, uh, I'm here for you if you need anything, if you need to talk, whatever. And it was like, you know what, here it is. I finally had that revelation yesterday and I mentioned how that was working for me. And, and then all of a sudden, it's starting to turn into a, a bigger picture that I wasn't prepared to see yet. So we're going to um, move forward with the recording because this is a, a recording of an exercise that we do. Oh, no, no, no. You were right on time. Um, we're going to move forward because what, what we're going to do, because I also have some self-care cards. And I didn't even get a chance to pull them. They flew out and I was only going to pick one, but it decided we needed four. And so... I just want people to understand like with the energy of the, you know, the full moon and the energy of the eclipses and it's the end of the year. So we're trying to finish what we started and then we're trying to plan for what's coming up that we have to not get trapped in the busyness of business. And I like it because it's spelled different, busyness of business. So that we just take a moment to just go ahead and take a deep breath in and breathe out and just kind of relax. And I'm going to share these self-care cards with you. The first one that we're going to reflect on is to just dance. Oh, goodness. And... Um, you might not see that as self-care, but your body in motion, some freedom and some rhythm. And it's so yeah. interesting that this was the first card to fall because what Crystal did yesterday was she busted out on that piano and, and let the energy flow with the music. And I'll let you say something in a moment, Nev, because I know you're the music master. And then the other one was flow like water. Um, sometimes we have everything right on our mind because it has to go this way and we got to do it right now. But then it's like, wait a minute, this is not how things are flowing today. We got to make an adjustment. You got to be able to pivot and make adjustments. The next one was beauty ritual. Take some time with yourself. I've been steaming. I got the new little steam guns. I've been steaming my hair and steaming my face. And every time I get a chance, I'm steaming and putting some uh, essential oils in it. And I'm like, ooh wee, I need to get me a touch up, a little my hair cut. So let's take some time for our beauty rituals. And then the last one is, and then I'll open it up to so people can speak, is um, spend some time with animals. I've been feeding the animals, but, and I noticed my cat is really like, hey, sit with me. My cat is to the point where he won't sit on the couch with me during the day because I'm too busy. And he wants to spend time with me just sitting. And so spend some time with the animals and get some positive energy from the animals. And I'll allow anybody to reflect on these cards and I'll post them real quick. If anybody wants to reflect, and then just keep in mind, you it is a recording, so if you <laughs> don't mind, but certainly the mic is open. 
I wanted to say grand rising goddesses. Hey. And, um, hi, Erica. Hello, Terry. And hi, it's Crystal. Nice to have you. Hello. Awesome. And anybody, any thoughts on these cards, Terry? Well, as I, as you were pulling them, it just, they really, it really just talked about the flow. And a lot of times, and we were talking a little bit before that, we have to just allow, allow ourselves that movement, the dance, the movement, the flow. And we're, we're, instead of us stopping it, like, I think that that, that those can also reflect on allowing the flow through us, like the chakras, opening up our chakras so that the flow is is no longer stopped at, at certain areas. So if we can see ourselves as a vessel that's just like a tube, allowing the energies to flow through it, and what do we need to do it? Maybe we do need to dance. Maybe we need to do a little yoga. Maybe we need to do some stretching. As soon as we start moving that energy, right, then we're then we're we're unblocking unblocking different attachments that are there as soon as we start to push things out and we allow that to come through and and even by doing the little rituals with our beauty rituals those are we're we're acknowledging the creator within us and so by allowing that movement we're, we're acknowledging that and the animals will help with that too because they see us as beautiful beings right we find things that we will put in in our field that we say well i'm not good enough for this or what's wrong with me or whatever animals don't see that when we allow the flow to move i think it, it the whole group of the grouping of those cards is just telling us to be um connected with more than who we are more than who we think we are and we are we're more than our physical body and so it's an acknowledgement of that by by doing little rituals and stuff that's and my thought even going back to crystal it's um these these things that you're doing that i notice on the pictures that i posted there is very ornate and sometimes we're like, no, I'm going to get the cheapest burger or I'm going to get the smallest, you know, bag or I'm going to get the, you know what I mean? Like we're very cheap with ourselves. We're very stingy with ourselves where we're so much more giving to others sometimes like that we we sometimes don't pamper ourselves and give ourselves what we deserve, you know, or we'll, we'll get the simplest instead of actually giving ourselves the most beautiful things, the most beautiful treatment. And uh, don't be afraid to give yourself the most beautiful part or to upgrade in some way the things that you do for yourself. You give, you know, give yourself a full amount of rest. Um, like yesterday, I was going to attempt to listen to my affirmations again before I sleep. And it's like, wait a minute, you don't have to constantly be in that mode. It is okay to just relax and have a cartoon and laugh. It is okay to just, you know, have a tea that's not Oh, the most special herbal tea that's going to, you know what I mean? To, to constantly be medicating in some way or fixing yourself in some way, but to just allow yourself to be and just be comfortable. Like people say they have a comfort foods and stuff like that, or get your favorite blanket and just take time for yourself instead of constantly being in school mode. Because I think as we think about, oh, we're, we're it's ascension, we kind of give ourselves like, this these goals but as if as if we're on a clock as if we're on someone else's clock I and I do believe partly from the way that we're trained to hurry up and get to work and work the maximum amount of time we're constantly in a work mode even in our uh, spiritual development and 
that is not going with the flow. That is not, that's, you know what I mean? Like, we're like, we need to get this astral projection now. We need to get in contact with the beings now. And we're just constantly like pounding ourselves to, to, to be on some imaginary timeline. And I think we have to remove that imaginary timeline. So the next cards that, that I have, because we're going to do individual readings after this, and we're going to do this, like the angels and gemstone guardian cards, which I like these because they'll give you a, a, a stone, but then it'll give you an affirmation on the back. And so the first one that I have is snowflake obsidian. Cowering in the back of your mind, you're going to reflect on this. Are you afraid of the dark? or of the unknown? Do you feel vulnerable? There's always darkness within light. Darkness accentuates brightness to clearly see situations, people, and circumstances. Embrace the dark to enhance the clarity in your life. Wow, there is a darkness within. Okay, then angel of contrast. This is the affirmation. I courageously see through the darkness of adversity to make positive changes that light up my life. I know there is light at the end of the tunnel. I see myself, situations, and others clearly and participate in the transformation of negative to positive. So if anybody would like to, on this recording, reflect on that, the mic is open. I'll take a picture. Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to say one thing. It's interesting that just in this time, just in general, we see so much darkness around us um, and we can get pulled into that. So it's, it's important to remember that there is light. And so connecting with the light that we have within us and not being allowed to be pulled into that, that vortex of the darkness, just, you know, hold your light and just remember that you are, a light being and and uh, just connecting with that light. And that's all I have to say. Don't feel rushed if anybody else wants to speak on it. And the next one I have is Apache Tears. And I'll put it in the group. Are you grieving the loss of someone or something? Feel the grief and allow yourself to cry. Release the toxins from your body, mind, and emotional being. Comfort and peace are close at hand. Focus your attention on your desired outcome. And the affirmation from the angel of comfort, I allow myself to feel my feelings and express them through my physical and mental actions. Tears flow easily, and I am releasing pent-up emotions. I am able to let go. I am comforted. I am at peace. It just makes me think of what Crystal was saying. Um, some of the things that we're let go, letting go of are these negative habits that we have because they're so ingrained in us and they're so a part of us. Those things we want to let go of, but it's still hard to let go of being a worrier. It's hard to let go of um, not asking for help. It's hard to let go of um, these these aspects of ourselves or the desire to be sad and the desire to be lonely. These are parts of us. And if we are trying to change during this time, it can be very scary because who am I if I don't, if I'm not a smoker, who am I? If I'm not a drinker, who am I? If not, I'm not a worrier, who am I? That can be very scary to approach. Well, what am I going to do? <laughs> like you just, 
a lot of people don't even understand when when people quit smoking like you just think oh it's bad for you people should quit but there's a worry that comes behind it on what will i become now if i give this one thing up um so some of the things that we're trying to let go of are the negative portions of us. What about, you know, friendships and relationship? What if, what am I, if I'm not constantly with this person or if I don't have this job? And that's a part of when we're trying to have new goals and start a business or start a new career, the fear of taking on that, new responsibility scares us away from wanting to do it. So, you know, even in that situation that you were discussing earlier, Terry, it's like, okay, I'm going to be a, 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 a coach, but oh, wait a minute, what's the rest of me going to be like? Like, what are the responsibilities going to be like? What if I disappoint people? What if I don't have the shoulders to carry it? this new aspect of myself. And so we begin to worry about taking that on. So I'm going to post these affirmations, but if anybody else wants to chime in on this one, this one is uh, grieving the loss. And it is almost time for our end of the year, old anxiety and or an old langsai is that how you say it? And um, maybe there's some friendships that you lost, but, for me personally, how this one affects me is the fact that uh, I think I get so caught up in the busyness of business that I don't allow myself to feel emotions that I skip over. I'm not sure. Is that also like a spiritual bypass? Because you keep so busy that you you don't even deal with the fact that you're you lost a friend or you failed at a task or that your body is in physical pain because you're just saying, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I don't know, Terry, is that a, is that a spiritual bypass or what would you call that when you, you're so busy? Go ahead. If you're not paying attention to the emotion that comes with that meaning of learning something, then you're ignoring it. Well, and, and, you know, a, a lot of times we need to thought when we're dealing with our emotions, we're dealing with that solar plexus. And so if we, you know, and, and, and it goes back to the allowing the flow through, you know, sometimes we're blocked in some of these areas and, you know, we don't give enough credit to our chakras that we, we, we blocking them continually. I shouldn't say blocking them, but, but we're having, energy that's kind of stuck in a, a certain place. So when we don't deal with emotions, it's more that that whole solar plexus is, is not knowing how to do it. So um, I, I think grieving is is so important because it's not all, it's about different losses that we have and it is an emotion. And it's like, we put it aside and we put it aside and, oh, I don't want to deal with it. But it's important to sit with it and what is it that we feel that we've lost and and why have we lost it and um it, sometimes by taking the time it's not as difficult as if we put it aside you know like we see things as a big monster but really when we stop and we look at it for a moment it doesn't become part of that monster we're, we're starting to um um take that 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 aspect down into smaller pieces and so maybe that's it's it's taking it apart that we need to it's do that elephant you're eating it one bite at a time one bite at a time did anyone want to chime in on this part of the recording and and, and we'll end it after that if anyone wants to share their reflection on these because like they said in Mission Impossible, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take these affirmations and these cards. How is this affecting you now? Reflect on that. And how can you carry this into the next week as we uh, connect with ourselves 
connect with our higher selves, dealing with these energies, moving through them, not allowing them to move, move us out of our connections, but to be able to deal with ourselves and what's on our plate and to flow, like Terry said, and not to get trapped in the busyness of business. And if not, then I'll go ahead and end this recording. My laptop is telling me, hey, get a new laptop. But um, <laughs> you're not the only one. Because the button, the mouse is just going crazy on here. So it's like, please don't kick everybody off. <laughs> I can't stop the recording. Oh, Lord. All right, so I'm going to end the recording. I found the button. <laughs>